What's going on everybody? Welcome to Cosmic Culture, the channel where we talk all major movie and television news, theories, breakdowns, and much, much more. I'm your host, Chris, and emphasis on the theories part today. Yesterday we got the Thor Love and Thunder trailer, and I think that there is a detail that many people have missed or have really just barely talked about that could be very important and telling moving forward when we compare it to the comic origin and what we know about this specific character. And there was a hidden detail, a introduction to a brand new character who you've already seen on screen but in another way is different, and it really is very exciting if what I think here is true. I saw it yesterday and I did a little digging today and every single time I got more information about this character it became A more realistic and B really really exciting. So we're going to talk about the possibility of us meeting Thor Groot from the comics in the MCU. Guys, this video gets me really excited, but first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell. You can also check me out on my other socials, Instagram at Chris M. Rosser, Twitter at the Culture Chris, and Discord and a few others are in the description link down below. So, let's dive right into this. From the trailer specifically, we had a really, really great time. We were introduced to Zeus, we saw a lot of other characters, Korg's back, the Ravagers are back, we saw Lady Thor, so much awesome stuff going on, so much we need to talk about just from that minute and a half long trailer already. However, this part in particular shows something important. Now they're but humble tools for peace. I need to figure out exactly who I am. Now, what you're seeing is Chris Hemsworth looking very, very attractive, standing up on top of a mountain, meditating, and trying to figure out who he is, which was kind of the main plot of this teaser trailer. Who am I? Am I a hero? Am I a king? Am I a nobody? Where do I belong? And that's awesome. That's a really cool segue into the plot of Thor Love and Thunder. But what I want to talk about is this moment in particular, where he buries Stormbreaker the battle axe made out of Uru metal by Eitri in the Davalier during Avengers Infinity War, which led to one of the coolest entrance scenes of all time. So let's walk through a quick sequence of events history lesson in the MCU. Starts off in Guardians of the Galaxy, Groot sacrifices himself in order to save his friends, proclaiming, we are Groot. At the very end, Rocket, his caretaker, his father, his son, his brother, his best friend, whichever you want to call out of those, picks up a piece of Groot and brings it onto the ship. Very sad that Groot has sacrificed himself in order to save them and the galaxy. He puts it in a little pot and we see Groot grows. He comes back to life as baby Groot and from there grows onto who we now see in the same trailer as Teenage Groot, maybe slightly older Groot than that. Well, after Groot grew up from being baby Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, who was very adorable, but not necessarily very helpful, we had Teen Groot, who, although sassy, definitely provided a ton of help when it was needed. And in one moment in particular, he helped Thor. I'm talking about the time on the Davalier when he picked up the hot battle axe and used his arm to create the handle for it. Now his arm is part of the battle axe. Part of Groot has become the battle axe. Which is super cool, made for a really cool handle, and gave Groot a really cool calling and connection to Thor, who would later then go on to become a Ravager, as we learned in this trailer, and has been hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy since. And just for a little extra added detail, not only was Groot part of that iconic battleground scene where he proclaims, bring me Thanos, but Thor himself, during Avengers Infinity War, informs us all that speaking Groot was a class in high school and he's capable of interacting with Groot, which is super, super cool because up until this point, really Rocket was the only one who was able to understand what Groot was saying. But Thor speaks Groot, so that's just an even further connection for this purpose. With all of that in mind, let's talk about what I think might be happening here. Or at the very least, what I think could be a possibility or foreshadowing for something special down the line. When Thor is bearing his battle axe, whether intentionally for the purpose of creating his own Groot or just by accident, there is a possibility that I think Groot could grow from this arm. This part belongs to Groot, and although it has been merged with a magical battle axe, 
That doesn't really mean that Groot can't grow from it. In fact, all that might mean is, in my mind, Groot will grow with magical battle axe abilities and maybe have some of Thor's powers as well. That's what I thought to myself, so I did a little digging and it turns out that's not crazy at all. In a different universe exists a Thor Groot, who is part of the Thor core, and I'm going to talk all about his existence in the presence here in just a second. But the existence of this character, Thor Groot, maybe means that they're trying to get there. They're trying to add another Groot character, everybody loves Groot, and James Gunn has made it very clear that he's done with Guardians of the Galaxy after this next movie, and that Guardians of the Galaxy 3 will be a very, very very sad movie. So it's possible we might be losing some of our friends, and although Star-Lord might remain, it sounds like Rocket, Drax, Mantis, and maybe even Groot are all in a lot of trouble, and might end up actually dying in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, leading for Star-Lord to go create a new Guardians of the Galaxy team. But everybody loves Groot, like I aforementioned. So maybe Marvel's way of keeping Groot around without keeping Groot around is by having Thor create his own best friend and Groot because he's very lonely right now, he's very lost right now, and maybe he and Groot got along very, very well during his days as a Ravenger. Or like I mentioned, maybe it's just accidental. Thor put his hammer down for some reason and it causes a Groot to grow. He picks it up and he sees there are little roots later on in the movie maybe, and he puts it back down later on towards the end. And the post credit scene could be a Groot growing from that location, who will then later on become Thor Groot. Now this is very exciting guys, especially if you are Doctor Doom fans, Battle World fans, or fans of a very epic Groot character showing up in the MCU. So for starters, Thor Groot doesn't come from our world, he's actually from a different world. And he resides as a member of the Thor Core in Earth 15513 in Doomsguard. Now Doomsguard is where God Emperor Doom during the Battle World series takes over everything and kind of is in charge of what's going on. And the Thor Core specifically are the police force that go around enforcing the dictator's will taking people out who are anti-Doom, and even in one of the Thor Corps missions, they go and kill Hawkeye, because Hawkeye is kind of arguing with whether or not what Doom's up to is good. They kill Hawkeye, and then move forward. Not much is known about Groot's origin, not in the MCU, not even in the comics, but this really fun run that has about six or seven appearances of Thor Groot shows us that Groot has developed Thor-like abilities as well as remaining in his Groot abilities. So this is one very, very powerful character, as Groot is already an underappreciated character for his strength and abilities as it is. It's very hard to defeat Groot, he actually sacrificed and killed himself, and yet he's still here. And it seems like we have another way to continue getting a Groot, even if he does befall a terrible ending in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which will be super sad to see Groot die again, but knowing that there's a possibility that they can bring him back through Thor's hammer, through Stormbreaker, that's got me really, really excited. Now, this version wouldn't per se be a variant like he was in the comics coming from a different world, whereas the Marvel main timeline in the comics is Earth-616, he's from Earth-15513, and he is very much a character for the Battle World franchise, the Battle World storyline with God, Emperor Doom, and this is actually the direction it seems like the majority of Marvel fans want the MCU to head a few phases down the road. They want to see Doom, they want to see God, Emperor Doom, specifically being the big bad, and Battle World Secret Wars sounds like an absolute blast of a time. It might be kind of hard to pull off on the big screen for it to make sense and for it to be easy for everybody to follow because it is a pretty crazy time in the comics, maybe one of the craziest sessions out there. However, it would be a lot of fun to see the MCU's rendition of this and to see a few phases down the line Doctor Doom actually meet his potential because in the comics he does become one of the most dangerous villains ever to exist in Marvel lore. So a lot of exciting stuff coming from this tiny little easter egg, or not even an easter egg, rather suggestion at the possibility of Thor Groot coming, because maybe later on he will join the Thor Corps and be the police force for God Emperor Doom. All of these things are very exciting and I know a lot of fans out there would love to see this come to play. So one, let me know what you think. Is this something that could or might be happening? Two, is it something you'd like to see happen? And three, how about the connection to Doom? Is that not exciting? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching to the very end of the video. If you found it helpful, useful, or entertaining, consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our daily uploads. Don't forget to hit the like button, and I'll see you guys all in the next one right here on Cosmic Culture.